please uh, open your laptop, if you have one, <laughs> and go to this link uh, and download the Thor browser. All right, let's start uh, exploring the deep web. So, as already was mentioned, I'm normally a uh, director. I've been doing research for about four years on the deep web and dark web uh, to come up with new ideas for films, documentaries mostly. Um, this story we're going to go to the, we're going to look at the clear net first. Just first get some tips and tricks on how to make our way through the clear net, uh, or as it's, all, it's called, the service web. And then we'll go deeper and deeper until we're in the dark web. So this must be a picture you recognize, the infamous iceberg. Uh, the clear net is pretty easy to explain. It's actually any, anything a uh, normal search engine like Google can, can search for and index. The deep web is uh, everything that's not indexed by Google. So that includes social media, but also things that are behind the passwords, uh, such as databases from uh, websites or even databases from, from government agencies, hospitals, pretty large, as you can see. And then the dark web is a small portion of the deep web. It's a part you can only access by using special software. Uh, it used to be Freenet a couple of years ago, and now Thor is the best way to get there, because Freenet has already died out a bit. Um, so like I said, the clear net, everything you see, everything a normal search engine like Google can index. So how many pages does Google index? That many, I can't even pronounce <laughs> the number right. <laughs> Stick 60 trillion, something. Um, and it gets updated 100 billion, trillion times a month. So it seems like Google already has a lot of information, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean you can find anything easy with Google. Why is that? It has way too much info. Uh, Google uses a relevance algorithm to uh, make sure that things, Google things you like to see are at the top and AdWords are a big part of that algorithm because it's the way to make money for them. But there are some tips and tricks to use Google in a way that we can actually find something we actually want to find. Let's say you found a quote and you really want to know where the quote is from. If you normally type in a quote, uh, like, like in a normal sentence, like uh, somebody throw a quote at me, something I can type in. To be or not to be. <laughs> That's fine. Here you go. You have the Wikipedia. This is actually a, a thing that's documented quite well, of course. Um, so this doesn't necessarily mean that the most relevant thing will be in there. Sometimes they, they even just uh, put parts of the words as, as, uh, as a search instead of the whole sentence. So the me, we, me, comma, we. Me, comma, we. Yeah, so now you can see it. Uh, me, do we, we, just pages that, has, that have we and me. Uh, but we were looking for something. Yeah, this is oh. This is uh, something that Mohammed Ali said. Ah. Doesn't, yeah, okay. That's some good background info. So by just adding quotes, Google now searches for um, the terms together. We still don't have the Muhammad Ali. So why is that? So why can't we still find what we're looking for? And that's because these, all these pages paid a lot of money to get on top. And I mean a lot of money. So let's find out how, mine, how much money they paid. I'm not a robot, I hope. So here you can see, for one click, 
uh, we buy gold near me costs five dollar I don't know if it works the same way let's find out uh, I can't work with quotes but anything that's relevant w that has me and we in it uh, has a value and the, the higher the value the more people pay to get on top mm -hmm. uh, and it means that sometimes th things can be 70 cents but in reality uh, these costs can add up to about $100 per search term this is so confusing the screens so Google earns about 78 to 97 percent of their income uh, by using advertising uh, yeah so you pay a cent to one hundred dollars per click and in 2016 insurance was the most uh, paid for click so what drives these prices of AdWords up it's all based on location so where are you and what city what country what time of the day you're looking at at the, the, the Google uh, the season when it's Christmas the prices go up um, the competition how many people want the same quote of course it's just a question of demand popularity uh, and the search term itself so I already hear thing what you mean by the search term itself these are the most expensive keywords as of today I don't can you all see it okay let's uh, let's go over the list yeah so business services bill bonds Casino, lawyer, assets management, insurance, cash service and payday loans, cleanup and restoration services, degree, medical coding service, rehab, psychic, timeshare, HVAC, business software, medical needs, loans, plumber, termites, pest control, mortgages, online gambling, banking, hair transplant, and the word Google AdWords itself. So the prices vary from $58 to $30 at the bottom. Is there anything uh, that you already think that is interesting right now about these words? I mean, you can actually divide these words in categories. So a lot of these were business to business things. For instance, business services, the highest ranked, highest paid for word is of course for other businesses, business software, it's also 40 bucks okay the next one is when people have problems they need to fix that need to be fixed now they're willing to pay more so the price of plumber uh, is 39.19 yeah, and the pli price for insurance is also very high 48 uh, rehab medical needs the term medical needs itself is 40 bucks uh, lawyers of course and people pay a lot to get their dreams come true so that's why the uh, hair transplant is in the top 25 list because people really dream of new hair probably uh, and timeshare it's a holiday sharing system uh, is on one, two, three, four, five, yeah I think 15 or something like that uh, casino is also a good time so what can't Google find 96% of the internet can't Google find. It's, uh, uh, even though Google has a huge index, when you compare it, it's, it's just this small compared to the rest of the, of the deep web. Uh, it's very hard to estimate how big the, the deep web really is because you can't really count what you can't really see. Uh, but an estimate is between 400 to 550 times bigger than what Google can index. Uh, so why can't Google index it? Well, not everything gets indexed. Google uh, does the index, for instance, a page that has been translated from the original page. Uh, so if you have a site in, in different languages, normally Google doesn't index those sites. It doesn't index all the pages of, uh, of a particular site. Uh, it also doesn't index uh, duplicates. When Google thinks you, uh, you duplicated, duplicated information, it won't index that part of your site. Uh, well, Google is not super fast. 
if you, it, it takes time to index your site, um, the back end of sites don't get indexed. So that means the server side. Um, and that's actually a big part of your website. For instance, who has ever worked with WordPress? Some people did, yeah. Okay, so you know that the part where you log in, that's Google can't access that part, of course, because it's behind the password. Um, hardware doesn't get indexed, even though it's part of the internet. We all have mobile cell phones on us, even laptops. Uh, but Google can't access that, of course. Uh, and some people don't want to get in, want their site to get indexed. And you can actually use a setting for that. Um, so then we go to a gray area. We go to an area where what Google can't find, but we can easily find. Uh, they, these are, for instance, libraries of universities. If you have uh, an access code, you can easily check it out. Or you can just use sites to, to search through the database of, of different universities. Uh, medical journals, journals, articles, legal documents. Uh, I don't know how it works in your country, but we actually have a site where you can just check a lot of legal documents uh, that have been released by a Freedom of Information Act uh, request. You can just go through it. Uh, but if you don't have any transparency in your government, of course you can always use WikiLeaks. And WikiLeaks index, indexed most of their pages uh, most of their information, so you can just search through the the emails of the the AK party, or the AK party in Turkey, or the Hillary Clinton emails. For instance, uh, let's see the word "pizza." These are all emails from Hillary Clinton <laughs> that have to do with have something to do with pizza. And she works on a BlackBerry, apparently. Maybe the AK party also has something to do with Pisa. You never know. Ah, a lot. Interesting. Little Caesar pizza, right? Maybe the Saudis. No, Saudis don't like pizza, all right? Um, besides legal documents, let's go over to uh, who knows this website? Tinai. Not a lot of people. This is a particularly handy website. You can just drag and drop an image, and then. Uh, it will try to search online to find wherever it was ever uploaded before. Um, yeah, why not try it out, right? Let's see it a bit. Let's just go to Google to find some image images. Uh, images. Name a subject of an image. Hmm? Cow. Cow. Okay. Let's not make it too easy. and press search. So it not only will find uh, the original image, but also wherever it, it was uploaded before that. So you can see cows from two, 2017, 18, but we can go to the source, 2013. So pretty interesting because you can also add some uh, social media pictures of someone and try to find out if you ever got uh, copied. 
Um, we'll go to social media in a bit. Anyone heard of the Internet Archive? This is an awesome way to find out if whenever a website gets uh, taken offline, you can still try to find it using the Internet Archive. Um, because people like to back up stuff, apparently. And then you can just search through it. There's also another one. Ah. What did I do wrong? Is it gone? Yes, yeah, so here's another one. So you can save pages and also search for saved pages. Yeah, the example here is Microsoft, of course. And here are all pages that have been saved from this particular website. You can also search for web shops and stuff like that. You only need a link, the original link. So the next part is social media. Not all social media messages get indexed, some do. If you have your privacy settings on public, Google might index your social media. And there are a lot of social media crawlers where you can just search uh, for specific terms or even locations and find out if people said something about it. So this is Pipple. Anyone heard of this one? Seen this one? Yeah? This is a nice background check tool, actually. Uh, so for instance, I can just type in my own name and find out. I will now search through a lot of social media uh, channels. I'm not from Massachusetts. So <laughs> that's not me. But this one's me, of course. Yeah, you can just narrow it down by using the location. Um, so yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. And if you, have, uh, if you only have an account name, unlike a, a forum, you can also use that to Fine. Does anyone want to share an account name they have? <laughs> Just maybe an old one, stuff like that. No, no one? <laughs> hmm? A. 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 G. R. A. G. B. N. B. N. Or B. N. All right. So it now searches to. Uh, a lot of websites to see if there if this name is still available. And it can narrow down your search if you're looking for someone. Doesn't mean that all the accounts are from the same poor person, of course, but uh, it's more likely. Um, so you can look for persons, but you can also look for subjects. Like crypto. It takes a little while. Um, so if you really want some good stuff, like the look, you, some sites are uh, able to pinpoint where something was set. Um, EchoSec is one of those sites, but unfortunately I can't show you because it costs $350 a month, which is insane. Uh, but a lot of uh, Law enforcement agencies use this site, and also a lot of journalists. I don't know if you remember the MH17 flight that was flying above Ukraine and got shot down. Uh, there's like this uh, research collective called Bellingcat. They used uh, actually this tool to pinpoint uh, the exact location that uh, the book rocket shot down the airplane, just based on social media pictures. That's pretty impressive. It's now being used by the by the by the prosecution team as evidence. So let's find out what this social crawler said. So here are a lot of people talking about crypto. A lot of tweets. And of course, we can also um, filter this info. 
uh, let's say we only want female and Google Plus. So this is both a handy tool and a creepy tool because uh, we can use it for journalistic purposes or for, for research purposes. purposes. But imagine, uh, I can imagine that in Turkey they use it to check out who is talking bad about their leader uh, and then they can get prosecuted. So it also makes it very easy to, to creep on people, kind of stalk on people. Uh, So how about this one? So because this is a free version of, of uh, EchoSec, but because it's free, it's not really that good. Uh, so what it's supposed to do is find out uh, if someone tweeted about this area. But apparently, no. apparently not. <laughs> So maybe we can try an area like my hometown. Let's see if it works. I guess. Ah, yeah, there it goes. So you can see the, <laughs> the actual street people were talking. Uh, yeah, and the profile pictures. This also used to work with um, Instagram. Because Instagram, where you normally take a picture, uh, the default setting of Instagram is to save your location in the, feed, in the photo. Uh, and up until 2017, you could actually just use search engines to find, uh, to pinpoint the location and find out where people, uh, which people took a picture at the location. It's very interesting for burglars when you take a picture of your uh, keys, for instance, <laughs> because you now have the keys of an apartment, you can just 3D print the keys. And, the, and you know which apartment you have to be at. <laughs> so fortunately, they, they, uh, they block that. Oh, here's, this is, this, I love this tool. <laughs> okay, this is Stalk Scanner. Uh, it was made to, to show how creepy Facebook really is, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna choose someone of my friends list just to stalk on. Yeah, she's fine. What you need is the exact link of the social media profile. And then you just paste it. Uh, and what this tool does is it just uses the feature uh, of, uh, of Facebook, the search feature of Facebook, but instead uh, of, of typing, typing it in manually, this tool does it for you. So let's find out what she commented on several pictures. And there you go, now you can see what pictures she commented on lately. Ah, apparently she wanted to win something. <laughs> uh, so this also works for non-friends. So just for random people. Um, great way to learn, to get to know your date, and also a creepy way to get to learn your date. No, you, <laughs> so don't do it. This is the music. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> she likes. And this is all public information, of course. So. Mind what you're sharing. So who uses fee contact? It's the Russian Facebook. Yeah. I, I wouldn't use this myself as well, but they have a particularly creepy thing. It's called Find Face. So fee contact opened up their database for, uh, for, for uh, companies to, uh, and they shared all the profile pictures of these, uh, of these people that are just using the Russian Facebook. Uh, and this site was made to uh, use so facial recognition software. Um, so you can make a picture of someone on the street you like, and then it will check out what the free contract profile is. Uh, yeah. Can't imagine that going wrong, right? <laughs> 
So to test this, I already have... Uh, oh, by the way, it's a free tool. So if you want to creep, <laughs> you can just creep and get 30 free searches. Uh, so I had a text, a text picture from just a Russian Facebook or something like that. Now it's loading. Pretty fast, actually. There we go. So this is the picture I uploaded, and the first result is him. So it works pretty, pretty good. That's creepy, right? <laughs> All right. So then we have a big part of the internet that's more recent, that's blockchain and cryptocurrency. Um, oh. How many people of you think uh, that blockchain, or that, that, for instance, Bitcoin is anonymous? Great, because it isn't. Anything, all the transactions on Bitcoin and on other cryptocurrency are actually public. So you can just check out someone's account and how, many mo how much money they have. Uh, I don't know what it is. Well, you can just follow the money, of course. It's som somewhere it had to begin. There are services to make it anonymous or make it more difficult to get anonymous. But even those services are, if you put a lot of effort in it, you can still try to find out whose account it was. It's more that law enforcement, it's too new for law enforcement to actually uh, understand it well enough. Uh, but in the Netherlands, we had, last month, we had a case of, uh, of money laundering. It was a drugs dealer on the dark web who, uh, they couldn't catch him on drug dealing. So they put a lot of effort in, in trying to find out how he get his, got his money and where it was sent to. And then they still put him in jail for three years, I believe. So it's still possible. If you want to find out how to stay anonymous using crypt cryptocurrency, uh, you can also later. Uh, let's first have some fun with this. So here, here is just blockchain.net. You can just uh, search for an, uh, an account name or a transaction ID. And then you'll, uh, yeah, you, then you can follow the money, where it was sent to, where it was coming from. So these are all transactions that came to this account. Uh, the same for Another block explorer, this is live. You can see transactions flying by. Ether, it's another Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency, Litecoin. I believe it was almost a year ago when a lot of people got hacked. Uh, there was this ransomware uh, virus going around. Uh, maybe you all had. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Far Cry, uh, Far Cry, uh, Petya, not Petya. They're all names they used for almost the same virus. Um, and someone set up a, on a Twitter account where you can just follow the, <laughs> the transactions of people who actually paid the ransom. And some research all, researchers also pay like a small amount just to follow the money because it's in your wallet and then you can easily track it. Uh, but it shows how actually how, how transparent uh, Bitcoin really is. You see? There you go. These are all when it started. And now we're getting a little bit more deeper into the deep web, the hardware search engines. As I told you before, hardware is also part of the internet. Anything that you connect to the internet becomes part of it. And there are actually search engines to, uh, to check out uh, the hardware. Has anyone heard of Shodan before? Uh, let me first show you what we can find with Google to show the difference. So let's say we want to check out a uh, webcam. Uh, Google allows this already. Because if you use the tools, you can already find a lot. So now it's searching for a URL like this that has some of these keywords in it. And these keys, keywords are most commonly used for video streams, so live streams. Wow. Right. 
let's choose one I already tested out. This camera is down, apparently. Ah, here one. Here's one. So we can actually control it also, as you can see. Well, it's lagging as <laughs> it's laggy, but it works. So these are just publicly available webcams. Um, but Shodan doesn't just find publicly available webcams. It also finds uh, non-listed webcams. Uh, let me see the right. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying to Shogun, uh, search for devices that are connected to port 554, which is the common uh, IP, uh, interface for security cameras, and show me cameras that have a screenshot. So you can actually preview the, the, the image before actually going into the camera, because that will be illegal. And now we can just, <laughs> if you want to, we can now go to, into Georgia and, and uh, control apparently a, a camera in the office or here in someone's living room in, in England or oh, Korea. Yeah. It shows about uh, 1,300 cameras that aren't that aren't uh, secured, and you can also search for countries. So, for instance. In the Netherlands, we have a lot of cameras as well. And now we can look inside someone's living room in the Netherlands. Uh, of course, you can do this anywhere, UK. So if they don't come up, it doesn't mean there aren't any cameras in the country. It, does, it, just, does, it just means that the cameras are a bit more secured. Stuff. Well, actually, this this website also allows you to search through exploits to 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 go even further. Yeah, and the default passwords normally are admin admin root admin admin one two three four five. <laughs> it's idiotic, um, but we can also view it on map, which is much more interesting. So let's find out how many cameras are connected right now in the world. Ah, oh, there we go. 4.7 4 million cameras are connected. So this allows us to search a bit better. And let's search for cameras with screenshot again. OK. Uh, so let's go to the other side of the world. Parking lot in Japan. <coughs> ah, someone's house, Korea. And during the the highlights of the Ukrainian war, uh, you could actually see people fighting on the streets just by using Shodan, which is of course a tactical uh, disadvantage because the Russians could do that as well. Or the, yeah, someone's house. Mm -mm -mm. And so how many cameras does your country have? Can anyone remind me of your country code? Is it SI? Great. Yeah, the, the RNA cameras with screenshots here. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. And if you start hacking here, I'm, it's being recorded, so let's not do that. Um, but apparently uh, 2,800, so that's quite a lot. 
so show not only allowed to search for for uh, webcams, but also for routers or anything connected to the internet. Does anyone have a particular brand they want to search for? We are oh, VRT, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Linksys, yeah, is, is it yeah. right? I don't really know how to write it. Ah, yeah, it's the other way around. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so 34,000 devices from Links is connected right now. So you can also use it for legit marketing <laughs> searches. Uh, of course, that wouldn't be any fun. Uh, oh yeah, at the end of the workshop, of course, I will, sh I will share all these, inf all these links with you so you can mess around with, with them. But I'm not in any way responsible <laughs> of what you do with it. So why is the hidden web hidden? There's still a part we didn't explore. We now use a lot of indexers, just not Google. Um, but there's still a, a, a big part of the, of the hidden web we can't access. Uh, and that's because you need a direct link. And that means, uh, it, it normally means it's just for a specific type of audience. For instance, uh, when Thor wasn't very popular, people still used the normal internet to buy drugs. Uh, and then you need to type in an, a specific IP address to get to the site, just to make it a lot diffi more difficult for law enforcement to, to find the website. Yeah, the back end of a server is still not explorable right now with what we used. Uh, and of course, confidential files are still locked. But that doesn't mean I can't show you anything. Because that would be boring if I was here and just was here just to talk about it. So let's go uh, the deepest step we can go right now. Anyone heard of Have I Been Pwned? It's search engine to find out if you're if you ever got hacked. So who is willing to give an account name or an email address that's old that you don't really use anymore? This website actually is is quite good. So you can also type in uh, things you are using, still using. <laughs> But I'm going to show you a next, the next website, and I don't want anyone to type in the normal, usable. Uh, right? Yeah, just press enter. No pawn is found. Yay! Congrats. <laughs> this is a very old email address I have that I especially use for uh, things where I know it could go wrong, for instance, spam or Adobe. <laughs> there you go, seven breaches found, according to Have I Been Pwned. Um, so you can also type in usernames or um, so passwords. Passwords. No, it, ju it just means I, I <laughs> used this, this email address on way too many sites where I didn't really use a good password. Or the sites got hacked themselves. It's mostly the sites that get hacked. Yeah, and quite a lot as well. For instance, uh, oh, they kicked off Adobe. OK, so it looks like not a lot, right? But this site isn't really complete. Here we have the illegal version of Have I Been Pwned. Uh, we leak info. They have 5 billion records. So. Uh, are you willing to type in your email address once more? Yes. Let's find out if you're still safe. Yeah, and then we have to check for everybody to like how good or how bad does the hacker have to be for this site to find find you? Uh, if you're really good, does it find you? Uh, no, yeah, well, it really depends on the website that got hacked. It, it, most of the cases, you can't really do anything about it. You can have like the longest password, but if the website doesn't secure the the information you you gave to the website, you're still fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this website also allows us to search through IP addresses, phone numbers, names. Uh, yeah, we now have an email. Let's go. And you're safe, apparently. That's good. Anyone else? Okay, I'll use my one. Please. 
email search. So I just used this one and it said seven breaches. And here it says nine breaches. Uh, what makes this even crazier is that you can just pay two dollars and you can get, actually get the passwords uh, and all the information they have on you. So that's why I don't suggest to use your normal uh, credentials because they make a lot of money by, by collecting data. So they might as well collect anything that's being uh, added, submitted to the form. And if you're as stupid as some people who uh, type in a password to find out if it's <laughs> somewhere in a database, you of course will be added to the password database. So don't do that. Um, but yeah. So how can you find what can't be found uh, by using this kind of tricks or hacking? Apparently, the, the sources of these websites hacked the databases. Uh, by getting direct links, uh, this really relies on social engineering. Just so if you really want access to some site you know exists, you have to find people who have access to it and try to become friends with them, try to win their trust. Uh, use, fortune. yeah, fortune, of course, is, is one of the ways. Um, Deep web indexers uh, actually are the kind of databases that already collected the information for you, but it's uh, most of the times it's really really expensive. And leaks, of course, if if people leak the the, the URLs or the link to the website, you can check it out. So we, before we enter the dark web, that's why you all installed Tor. Uh, let's do a recap using a metaphor. So let's say the clear web is like uh, a city center, right? Uh, it has cameras, so anything, everything can be monitored. Google gives you this great plan, this great map to check out where you want to go. But Google monitors everything all the time. And they do that not to spy on you, but to, because your information is valuable. Because the more they know about you, the more valuable you as an account become. And don't think it's like euros, it's just cents. But uh, like one cent times six billion users, it's a lot of money, of course. Um, well, websites are the stores of the, of the shopping mall we just saw. Um, and the deep web is the part that's, that only uh, VIPs or members or personnel can access. So how can you still access it? You can try to sneak your way in, like hackers do. You can just try to, to open doors and see if they, or try to, to push on doors and see if they open. So just try to type in URLs and try to find out if you, if you can get in. Um, yeah, because normal people most of the time use access cards, passwords. Uh, and when you're in there, it can look like this, like, like this huge pile of information uh, that probably is very secure. But it can also be like this, like this, this old warehouse where people just come to hang out and, and go underground. So what is the dark web then? The dark web is the dark alley behind the shopping mall. It's a place where you can go to, to stay anonymous because there aren't any cameras. Um, and what can you do there? You can, do, you can meet up with, with people like, if you have an affair, you can meet up with, with persons there. Uh, you can meet with a journalist to give information, of course, if you don't want to be seen. You can buy drugs, of course, you can buy drugs in the dark alley. Uh, yeah, you can do a lot of things on the dark web, but not necessarily illegal things. It's just an option. So the dark web is the dark alley of the internet. So who uses the dark web? Uh, it will surprise you that, that actually a lot of policemen, military uh, diplomats and spies use the dark web. It was originally even designed for that use. Of course, journalists, activists, freedom fighters use it. Think about Snowden, uh, Assange. They all use the dark web to become whistleblowers. Uh, it's a way to bypass censorship. Uh, it's a way to access sensitive information without getting spied on. Because remember, Google can, can check what you do, but if you're on the dark web, they can't. Uh, geeks use it just for, because they're trying to have fun. Uh, criminals use it, of course, and you're going to use it in a few minutes. So, what is Tor? 
TOR stands for the Onion Routing Protocol. It's a way to stay anonymous on the clear web. Actually, 97% of the people that use TOR use it just to go on normal websites. And the most visited website on the dark web is Facebook, just like on the normal internet. But it's also a gateway into the dark web. So with, with TOR, you can just go online, do anything you want. You normally use your normal browser for, but stay anonymous. But you can, there's like a premium function where you can access uh, specific links, and these links are the dark web. So, a bit of history. Tor was developed by the US government in 1995. Uh, it's funded by the US government from like 95% as of now. Uh, and it was released as a non-profit organization in 2006. That also implies that if it was really like this criminal hotspot, why would the US government even set it up and pay for it, right? Okay, before we're gonna use Tor, we need to know how to stay safe. Uh, so let's go to the Tor browser you, all, you installed. So, all right. So don't open it full size. That's the first thing you need to know. Well, we go to here, open menu, question mark, and then about Tor. Because you just downloaded it, it's supposed to be updated. But every time you use Tor, check if there is an update. If there's an update, it will appear here. All right. Then we go over to the onion, security settings, and set it to safest. It's normally here, but that's because like I told you before, 97% of the people don't use it to go on into the dark web. So they don't really need the extra features the safest uh, option has. Okay. Next thing you need to know is whenever you make an account on a dark web website, never use anything that can link you to the clear net. So never use uh, an account name you used before. Because as I just showed you, you can easily scramble for account names and then link, link it to you. Uh, never use an email address you, do, you normally use. Uh, don't give any hints about your location. Especially here, because you have a pretty small population. The government can actually see who's using Tor. Uh, so that really uh, makes their search much easier. Uh, and talk English. Or Russian preferred English. Why the paranoia? Laws can change. Uh, immediately it rings an alarm. Like I told you before, the government can actually see who's using Tor and that's, that raises a little bit of interest. And if you actually subscribe to, for instance, a, a forum where they also talk about uh, drug dealing, or if you're just curious and, and uh, come around somewhere where uh, you can actually buy drugs, but you're just browsing through just to, to, to collect information. Uh, there are cases in um, different countries where people who just subscribed to such forums were prosecuted for being part of a criminal organization because they uh, had an account. So the next thing, know what you're clicking on. Uh, avoid the following words, uh, CP or cheese pizza. That's normally something you don't want to see. PD, of course, anything with kids, family, scandals, forced, etc. Also, I wouldn't suggest going searching for Hitman, because most of the time uh, these, are these websites where they try to sell Hitman services, so you can actually try to kill, uh, pay for someone to kill. Uh, most of the time these are just fake uh, and honeypots from the government to, to see who is actually uh, willing to kill. So how are we going to explore it? Because we're now in the Tor browser, but we don't really know where to go. This is a nice graph. Um, in 2016, there was a large research on the, on the dark web. The dark web is actually pretty small. It's just uh, 60,000 pages, and about half doesn't even go anywhere. It's just an empty blank page. So you're left with 30,000 pages. And, and from those 30,000 pages, 61% uh, is linked somewhere. So uh, you can find the link somewhere, or it's indexed in some way. And 39% is very hard to find. Uh, and that's probably with a good reason, so don't try to find it 
So we're actually going to use the same tactics we used for the deep web. I'm going to use dark web search engines and crawlers uh, and social engineering. So just ask people or try to find people who already uh, found some interesting websites. Yeah, so first let's go over to some interesting things I found. I'll make a page pin in a, in a minute. So this is a, a web crawler. A web crawler is actually a page where all the websites that are online are being pasted at. And it also means it's uncensored. So you'll find a lot of horrible shit you don't want to click on. So don't click on anything that doesn't have a description. Well, there are a lot of links here. So guarding is something criminal. It's uh, where people sell stolen credit card information. And this is a forum where you can buy this information. So you find a lot of this shit. Also, cocaine, of course, dark web marketplaces. Just to show you the. different aspects of it first. This is, by the way, a very old website. Hansa has been taken down by the Dutch police, Alpha Bay by Interpol. And Dream Market is, I strongly believe it's still in, in the hands of, of, uh, of law enforcement. And Grams is a search engine. Ah, best blog, interesting. Bitcoin doubler, <laughs> it's scammers. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of pages. I'm not going to go all over all of them. Uh, a lot of them are also fake because you're anonymous <coughs> and the people who run the websites are anonymous. You can get e easily get scammed. Uh, I think it's a good thing because I'd, if criminals get scammed, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Don't be a criminal. Okay, so what's this? Ah, just, uh, this is a geek website. Just someone talking about this PlayStation. Very cool. <laughs> uh, this is also one I like. Uh. Okay, let's let's first give you another way to search through Tor, and I'll give you some examples I like. Um, let's yeah, so this is a search engine. Oh, and of course, things get advertised on Tor as well, because this is just a new gold ads. So give me a search term, and I'll try to find something interesting. Please keep it legal for now. <laughs> yeah, we can go illegal in a sec, but we're still not doing anything wrong if you just search for information. Art. Art. Well, that's a good one. I mean... <laughs> Never searched for that on the dark web. Dragon Soul. Live performance art. Okay, this can go horribly wrong, of course, but. Ah, good porn photographers. That's also. <laughs> Motion design. So as you can see, Tor is really slow. And that's because your connection is going through like uh, at least five different locations before it connects to the normal, in to, the, to the internet of Tor, the website. Oh, this is just uh, a treat where people post things they like, I think. I don't know why this guy wants to be anonymous. It's pretty good. Okay, this looks... <laughs> 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 
Wow, also. I understand why he wants to be anonymous. I think it's kind of a Reddit. Ah, oh, look at that. It's just a website full of art. That's pretty cool. Oh, this is racist frog, right? <laughs> All right. What else do we have besides art? Ah, wow, best masturbator ever owned. Awesome. Even reviews. <laughs> Right, so this is just uh, like a forum, I guess. A little bit like Reddit. And the other one is down. You'll see this a lot. A lot of websites are online, offline, online, offline. Okay, so the, this was the next step. This is just a radio station on the dark web. Okay, it's supposed to give you lovely music, but the sound doesn't work on this computer. So this is a hacktivism website. So these are guys that have been imprisoned. Yeah, it's all linked to anonymous. Interviews, information. Um, what else can we find? So this is like a WikiLeaks, only a bit more amateuristic. Uh, just data drops of an arms dealer. Uh, this is the official source, secure drop website where you can contact journalists using the dark web to, to hand out confidential information, to leak information, and all the big papers, of course have their own channels. Mm -mm -mm. Of course, WikiLeaks has a page on it as well. This is just an online magazine it's made for the dark web. So journalism. Very curious what this is. Oh wow, this is a like urban exploring website. Underneath of the university, there, there's like this huge uh, tunnel network. And some guy just made uh, a map so you can explore it yourself. This is a website about the Hong Kong protests. When, this, when these protests were, I think it was in 2015, uh, this website was used to share information about what's going on there because everything was uh, censored. And now the leaders of the protest movement are all still in jail. So of course there's also a Questions and answers website. Uh, and actually, to my surprise, uh, the subjects aren't really that horrible. Uh, 
Of course, you have some web, web jobs, but most of these subjects are actually pretty <coughs> legit. How do you make your password more safe? Uh, it's also, uh, a lot of people use it, as you can see. Should I remove my wisdom teeth? Uh, so why would people ask these questions anonymous? Because most of them are ashamed of they are a bit wacky. This one uh, is, is awesome. <laughs> is Angela Merkel controlled by a Russian troll factory? No, is the answer. <laughs> Uh, and this one is also very adorable. <laughs> How long should, I, should my dick be to satisfy a woman? <laughs> <laughs> and there's like this really good answer. Uh, if you can see it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one it needs to be the size of a gorilla, gorilla's arm. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and that brings me to the final thing. So we saw there, on the web, you can find a lot of horrible shit on the dark web, but you can also find a lot of fun things and interesting things as well. So does the dark web have a valid reason for existence? If, if we go back to the research done in 2016, 29% of the dark web websites are just file sharing websites, so things you can't even oh, access uh, without the correct link. 28% uh, is leaked data. I'm pro... Uh, Transparency, so it really depends on the data that's being leaked, but most of the time, if it's about governments, it's okay. Uh, financial fraud, 12%. News media, 10%. So even though financial fraud is a bit, a bit of a huge uh, topic on the dark web, news media directly follows it with 10%. Promotion, so self-promotion. Discussion forums, 5%. Drugs, only 4%. Uh, internet and computing, the geeks I talked about, 3%. Hacking, the, the bad geeks, <laughs> 3%. Uh, porn, so that could be child pornography as well, of course. Only 1%. So Weapons, 0.3%. And other, 0.1%. Over so if you look at it this way, it isn't really that dark, is it? Uh, yeah, that, that comes back to 50% of the Tor websites are just perfectly legal They're for stuff like con contacting journalists, uh, having an opinion about your, your government and your government doesn't allow it. Uh, just, just things you think are interesting. Uh, Tor U has 3.5 to 4 million users a day. Uh, and 98% serves the clear web using Tor. So if you directly uh, block Tor. Most of the people who use Tor don't even use it for, for uh, scary stuff. They just use it to get online and stay safe uh, and be anonymous. So I think the lost power of the government and civilians, I think that's the main reason why we should use Tor and should uh, allow Tor because uh, what else can we do if we want to, to talk freely about, uh, about our government when the government suppresses people. It's maybe not something that's happening right now, but you ne never know what's happening in the future. Uh, for instance, Turkey had a, like this very nice leader and it turned out only a few years later he, he became an authoritarian figure. Um, and a lot of people, uh, on the, a lot of users on the dark web are actually Turkish. There are a lot of Turkish forums where people just talk politics.